So we mentioned it uh, a couple of minutes ago, the EAB or the Emerald Ash Borer, and, and you all have probably heard about the, its arrival and the, and the effect that it's having on urban forests, and principally because in a lot of urban forests and in urban areas, the ash, different kinds of ash trees are a huge proportion of it. Can you tell us a little bit about how, what you have to do with, uh, yeah. with EAB? Um, so, uh, first of all, every forest management plan should be based on an inventory. That's good. Should be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have one yet. Um, we're working on it, and we have been working on it for years, but uh, understaffed. And yeah. Well, how, you said six people? No. Like, how, you've hired since you, you, two others. That's it. The, those are the new staff. So I'm counting each one of them twice. <laughs> There's supposed to be two more, so yeah. so five new positions identified in the plan. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the staffing before we arrived didn't include any technical positions like that. Okay. So the forestry supervisor Randy Drury was doing a forest inventory in his spare time, <laughs> and so it's taken a long time. A key signature of a biological job. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have any spare time, yeah. so so it wasn't going all that uh, quickly. Yeah. Um, but so uh, I say that only to say that we don't really know how many ash trees we have in the city. Yeah. Uh, we put an estimate on it of city-owned ash trees of 10,000, mm -hmm. uh, and we'll see as we get closer to completion, at least of the ash portion of our inventory. Yeah. Because now we're focused just on the ash because we have to. Yeah. Um, we'll see how close that is, and then of course uh, the city-owned piece—that's streets, parks city-owned uh, natural areas and woodlands. Uh, that's only a portion of the urban forest and the rest is on uh, private land or institutional land like where we're standing. Uh, and I don't know the exact breakdown in Guelph yet. Uh, we'll get a better idea when we finish the inventory, but uh, probably somewhere between a third and a half is a city-owned portion. So we have we have roughly 10,000 ash trees, let's say, out of a total city tree population, city owned, on the order of magnitude of 100,000, let's say. So we're in good shape compared to a lot of places because uh, many places have more than 10% ash. Uh, Ottawa, for instance, has 25% ash, and they're farther ahead of us with their infestation as well, and it's devastating. Um, we're pretty lucky in Guelph. 10% is not bad, and the 10% is pretty concentrated in a few areas that, that we are now concentrating our mitigating efforts in. Uh, so, uh, our emerald ash borer plan uh, includes uh, well, inventory and monitoring, of course. Um, it includes some uh, treatment of uh, city owned ash trees. Which, by the way, the university has already uh, is ahead of us. Has already treated all their specimen ash trees. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, and of course, the removal and, and replacement of uh, ash trees. So, um, so in some cases, we're not waiting for the trees to die before we replace them. Where we have a park situation that we know is ash dominated, a certain area, uh, we're going in this fall. Uh, to a lot of these places and, and planting trees already. Yeah. Um, it may be 10 years before the ash trees die, yeah. but there's enough space, so we're planting the sister trees. Head start, or, yeah. Uh, death watch trees. <laughs> um, and yeah, get get 10 years of growth, up to 10 years of growth maybe on some of these trees before the ash trees die. Yeah. Uh, so. We're, we're trying to make sure that the impact on the canopy cover is uh, as, as reduced as we possibly can make it. Of course, when you replace a mature tree with a, with a stick with leaves, uh, it's not the same and it won't be the same for decades. Um, so even when we replace, uh, I mean, at a minimum, we'll replace one for one, but uh, I'm hoping to do quite a bit better than that. But, uh, one of the one of the key uh, attributes of the urban forest that drives the functionality of the green infrastructure is leaf surface area, and 
uh, the leaf surface area on nursery stock is wincy wincy yeah. and uh, grows exponentially as the tree matures, uh, which is why uh, you'll hear people correctly advocating for the care and uh, protection of the mature trees uh, because you, and you can you do replace them but you're waiting decades yeah. to get the same, the same, uh, the same functionality yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we have uh, EAB started in uh, well a couple years ago in the south end in the Clearfield West uh, neighborhood We've already removed trees from there. Uh, our monitoring program last summer with uh, traps that have attractants for the adults uh, showed that uh, they were present throughout the city. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, we gave up on that monitoring program because we didn't think we were going to learn much new anymore. Uh, and we moved to the more uh, intensive and expensive uh, branch sampling methodology which requires sending a person up in a bucket truck, taking a branch from a certain spot, a certain size in the tree. Thinking that 2014 would be our last injection year, uh, with these monitoring results from this uh, May and June, we're now thinking maybe we've got a bit of a reprieve and we may be able to inject some trees in 2015. Uh, That's good news. Unantis like you say, unanticipated. Yeah, no, we were, we kept waiting for the bad news to hit as, yeah. as the, the bark was coming off these branch samples and, and it didn't come, but uh, who knows, maybe we just were really bad at picking uh, uh, representative branches. Were your pheromone traps, I presume they're pheromone traps, are, are just really attractive? <laughs> <laughs> they're not pheromone, uh, they have an attractant that smells like fresh ash. Oh, there you go. <laughs> it's awesome. It's awesome. Um, so, uh, maybe of interest to uh, the group uh, to know that uh, our highest priority for saving trees uh, is on ash dominated streetscapes and ash dominated parts of parks. Uh, so, we have whole subdivisions that were planted mainly the monoculture of ash 20 or 30 years ago. You'll be relieved to know that that is a practice of the past. Um, you might wonder why it wasn't uh, more in the past, but uh, these things happen. Um, ash, ash was, uh, ironically, ash was the favored tree to replace elm after Dutch elm disease. We didn't quite pick up the full message there from Dutch elm disease, but uh, uh, anyway, uh, those are our top priorities, but uh, we also are going into the woodlots, um, uh, city-owned woodlots, and selecting trees that we can uh, we can inject, not so much for their amenity value, but for their in-situ conservation value. Mm -hmm. It'll be a, like 5 or 10% of our injection budget, but uh, still, we'll have, we'll probably have 50 50 trees in the woods uh, injected like that, including uh, we think we're going to get some black ash. So mm. uh, pretty excited about that because maybe there wouldn't be any black ash yeah. unless we did that. So, um, but we're focused on the streets and parks because what I said earlier, uh, the importance of this forest is uh, driven by its importance to people. Um, so you can imagine if you were on a street completely lined with ash, and they were all going to die. Uh, not only it knocks your property values back by up to, well, depending on which uh, study you read, yeah. 10, 15, 20 percent, uh, but it's it's demoralizing. Yeah. And actually, uh, there's a study uh, from two years ago, I think, in the States, a year and a half ago, that showed uh, a link between EAB uh, in a county yeah. and human mortality. Sure. Uh, there's no there's no causal links yeah, that yeah. they tried to prove, but but it, it's uh, statistically significant. Yeah. Uh, and you go, whoa, 
what what's driving that? Uh, the sticker shock when the arborist gives his uh, price for removing those ash trees? I, I don't know. Uh, anyway, there is there's we always knew there was a link between the urban forest and, and people's health. Uh, this was kind of an extreme example where you that surprised you more. It's your environment. If that's your that's where you live. That's, yep. Yeah. Um, so, uh, overall, the Emerald Ash Borer plan is to uh, ride out the next 10 years, uh, making sure that uh, people and property are safe from dead and dying ash trees, uh, minimizing the hit to our urban canopy and streetscapes, parkscapes, um, getting things started as as early as possible, uh, and trying to make sure that EAD doesn't consume the entire forestry program, right. so that we yeah. don't. I mean, uh, uh, out of 22 recommendations in the Urban Forest Management Plan, EAD is only mentioned in one of them. We don't want to have to forget the other 21 recommendations over the next decade. Yeah. That would be a problem. Uh, so that's that's the gist of. Yeah, yeah, yeah.